Come on, come on, come on. Good morning. I didn't say morning. I said good morning. Yeah. You know what today is, right? This is the day that the Lord has made. And don't let it go by. Amen. Enjoy it while you can. Amen. Yes. God created this day. That's the beauty of it. You know, God creates every day. But the problem is, you know, in our minds, we create the day we want to create. Whether it's good or bad, we want to create it. So in our minds, that's how it works. Amen. But this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Woo. I tell you, so much is going on this week. Uh, but that's like with every week, right? Amen. The same 24 hours in every day. So we thank the Lord for them. I do. I know I do. I wake up thinking that. I can't wait to get here. Amen. <laughs> From the book of Romans, the 14th chapter, verses 10 through 13. You then, why do you judge your brothers or sisters? These are questions that he's asking us. Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me and every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us, will give an account of ourselves to God. Ooh, not to me, not to your neighbor, but to God. Let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling blocks or obstacles in the way of a brother or sister. Ooh. Oh, that mercy. And otherwise, you got to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Amen. You know, and love really ain't that complicated, really. You know, we just make it complicated the way we think. Well, Pastor, you just don't know. They, they talked about me. You just don't know. They owe me some money. You just don't know. They treated me when I was young. Amen? You just don't know. Well, I don't know. But here's the thing about it. God does. Ain't right? And he going he, he gonna to redeem you. Amen? And he going to give you justice. You know, you might see it and you might not see it. But God going God gonna to intervene on your behalf in a way that you can see it or not see it. But he will serve justice. Because one day we're going to all stand before his judgment seat. Amen. Let us, let us pray. Eternal Father, we come before you today. We want to lift up a few families today, oh gracious Father, who are, who are celebrating the loss of a loved one. We pray for the Travis family. We pray for the Peak family. We also ask that you intervene on the Mims family, oh gracious God. We ask, oh God, that the family that had to fire out and went in terrorists, that you would be with them, oh gracious God. We pray for those families, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you give them comfort and peace, rest and strength in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you for all the wonderful things that you continue to do for each and every one of us, oh God. Despite the fact that we fall short, you still pick us up, dust us off, and send us on our way. So we thank you for bringing us out and taking us to. So, God, we just want to give you the glory this morning. We just want to magnify you, for you are truly worthy to be praised, oh God. So we come today, O oh God, to worship and praise your holy and righteous name. O oh Father, we just ask that you continue to watch over those who are less fortunate than ourselves, O oh God. Continue to minister unto them, O oh God, in their needs. And then, Lord, we just thank you again. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our friends. And we thank you for our church family. We ask that you continue to be with us all as we continue to worship and praise your holy and righteous name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh, Lord. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh, Lord. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heaven and the earth. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no grace is high enough to express how great you are.
in him do I live, move, and have my being. In him do I live, move, and have my being. Say, in him do I live, move, and have my being. In him do I live, move, and have my being. Because I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without. You. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without. You. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. In Him do I live, move, and have my being. In Him do I live, move, and have my. Say, in him do I live, move, and have my being. In him do I live, move, and have my being. Because I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. So breathe you me and live in me and let your glory reign on me. And live in me. Live with me. Let your glory reign on me. Let your glory reign in me. Say, live through me. Through me. And live through me. Let your glory reign in me. Said I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Lord, thank you for your mercy and your grace. I'm nothing without you. Say, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say, I'm nothing without Nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm nothing, nothing, nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without. Say I'm nothing without. I'm nothing without. Say I'm nothing without. I'm nothing without. Say I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Amen. Amen.
went through a whole lot. And just can't take it no more. You almost want to just let go. Been there many, many, many times. That's what this song is all about. I almost let go, but God kept me with his grace and mercy. I almost let go. I feel like I just couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me bound. Depression weighed me down. But God held me close, so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. My favorite part right here. I almost gave up. Maybe you feel like you just want to give up. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. The devil really had me. Guess what? But Jesus came and grabbed me, and he held me close. Yes, he did. So I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. So I'm here today because God kept me. I'm alive today only because of His grace. Oh. God kept me. He kept me. So I would let go. I almost let go. Yes, yes, yes. I felt like I just this old world anymore oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. my problems had me bound depression weighed me down God held me close so I wouldn't let go his mercy kept me Oh, I wouldn't let go. And then I almost, yes, yes, yes. I almost gave up. I was right there at the edge of my breakthrough, but I couldn't see it. The devil really had me. But Jesus came and grabbed me, and he held me so close, so I wouldn't let go. His mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. So I'm here. 
couldn't pay that bill. And you kept what you had. I know for myself. God me. Five star general in the devil's army. I'm not saying that just to be sad, but I'm telling you what I was. God kept me. He kept me. Grace and mercy touch me. stage. Amen. Amen. We almost gave up. Yeah, I've been at that door. I've, I've opened that door several times in my life. Well, I almost gave up. Yeah. You're like, Lord, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Almost gave up. Amen. But I decided to give Jesus another try. Amen. I love that song. I think everybody can relate to that. But he kept me. Amen. Well, I'm excited today. Amen. I tell you, I... Uh, I was focusing on, I was like, Lord, what's the word, what's the word? And then, uh, you know, we had, you know, our classes on Wednesdays are really, really good classes. They are very thought-provoking, you know, and the perspective is a little different than what you're normally used to, but the author has you thinking, and the teachers have you thinking. And he, you know, and he was talking, and he was talking about how sometimes, you know, we focus on the wrong thing when you think about it. You know, you focus on the wrong thing. And so he was talking about that in, in, in this particular section uh, of the book. And uh, I, was, I just kept thinking about that all week. I kept thinking about, you know what, 
We do. We really focus on the wrong thing. We really focus on the wrong thing when we begin to focus on things. You know, instead of focusing on Jesus, we focus on everything else besides Jesus. In the book of Numbers, yes, Old Testament, chapter 14, Old Testament. Yes. I'm going to take my time today, if you don't mind. So instead of being finished in 20 minutes, I need 25, okay? (laughs) Beginning with the verse number 20. The Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, Not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. But because my servant Caleb, now you know that's something when God called out your name, you know what I mean? That ought to make you feel good about yourself, amen? And he says, but because my servant Caleb has a different spirit, oh, say different spirit, different spirit, and he followed me, not perfectly, but wholeheartedly, I'm going to bring him into the land he went to. And his descendants will inherit it. You may be seated. Yeah. Man, different spirit. And I want to talk about the wrong focus. Amen. I want to talk about the wrong focus. The wrong focus. You know, how far we go and how much we grow in life is not determined. Listen to me now. By what you believe about God. It is equally impacted by what you believe about you. Don't give the enemy a seat at the table. Amen. Don't let him sit up here with you. You know, because the Bible tells us in Proverbs, it says, so a man thinketh. He is. And whatever he thinks in his heart. You notice that the writer didn't say what God think. It says, so a man thinketh or a woman thinketh, he is. So it's saying that we will behave, right, in a way that's consistent with how we see ourselves and not necessarily how we see God. Sometimes you got the wrong focus. So what I'm saying is that there there can be some inconsistencies in the way God sees us and the way we see ourselves. And whoever wins the battle or the war in their head or mind between how God views you and how you view yourself going to determine what happens to you What happens through you, what happens with you, and what happens for you. You got to look at this. Your advancement in life is what determines who wins the argument in your mind. Do you have the wrong focus? Do you have the wrong focus? So how do I? Know that you got arguments in your head because I know you got arguments in your head. The Bible tells us that. When you read it, it says this. It says that we exhaust Christ in every argument that comes against the knowledge of God. 
And then he goes on to, and that same scripture says we need to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. See, I know we argue with other people. But you know what? You argue with yourself more than you argue with other people. Oh, you argue in your mind. You argue in your mind. You argue in your mind. I don't think I can do this. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I, don't, I, I just can't. I, don't, I just don't see it. I know we argue with other people. But we argue with ourselves more than we argue with other people. Think about it. Because the enemy, right, is trying to convince you that what God says about you isn't true. That's what he's saying. He did it to Eve in the Garden of Eden. So if you are dealing with that mental warfare in your head, amen, that's telling you what you can't do, what you won't do, what you can't be, what you can't recover from, and what you won't have, I got a weapon for you today. I got a weapon for you today. I got a weapon for you today. I got a weapon for you. Do you want a weapon? Do you want a weapon? And you know what? The weapon comes in the form of words. It comes in the form of words. Here it is. The devil is a liar. Y'all didn't hear me. The devil <laughs> is a liar. Now, that's a weapon my grandmama used, my granddaddy used, the old saints used, amen. A weapon my auntie used, amen. But what I want today is I want to show you, and I want you to start using it. The devil is a liar. Now, when I say that the devil is a liar, I'm not saying that he doesn't tell the truth. That's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you that he can't tell the truth. Because the scripture tells us that what? He's a liar, amen, and the truth is not in him. That's what the, that's what the scripture say. It says that he is a liar and the truth is not in him. Which means that every time he tells you something. It is exactly the opposite of what the truth is. So when he tells you that you can't, you can. So you should start praising him. Because when the enemy start telling you, you're not going to be anything, the truth of the matter is that you are. Because the devil is a liar. And when the enemy tells you, amen, that you can't achieve it, the truth of it is you will. And when the enemy is telling you you can't recover from it, the truth is you can. So whatever he tells you you can't is actually it's the opposite. You can. And so when he tells you that it's over, Oh, Lord, have mercy. You need to start praising God because we know it ain't over till God says it's over. So we got to start giving him glory because the devil can't tell the truth. The devil is a liar. Oh, I've seen parents do that. I've seen their children get out there and get wayward and people be like, the devil is a liar. You ain't taking my child. Amen. The devil is a lie. You ain't taking my job. The devil is a lie. You ain't taking my marriage. The devil is a lie. You ain't taking. You ain't taking. You ain't taking. Amen. So you got to start giving God glory because the devil can't tell the truth. I'm telling you, we've been holding on to the wrong focus. We will focus more on the negative than the positive, the lie than the truth. 
And that's what I'm telling you. When the enemy tells you you can't do something, you know why he's telling you that? Because he got a sneak preview of what God is about to do in your life. That's what he's doing. He sees what God's about to do in your life. And so he got to make you believe you can't do it. Amen? See, the enemy knows that it's not enough, amen, for God to believe you can do it. Amen? 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 You got to believe that you can do it. You got to believe that you can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens you. Amen? See, it's his job to tear you down. It's his job to make you think you can't. It's his job to make you say, I won't. Amen? It's his job to tear you down by making you believe that you can't. And that's what you got to know. See, it's not enough for God to believe that you can. You got to believe that you can. You can't believe in God if you don't believe in yourself. And the reason the devil comes so hard at some of us is an indication, indication that the devil got faith in you more than you do. That's why he's coming for you. He got more faith in you than you do. So what I need you to do is to catch up to the devil. Amen? Because he got more faith in you than you do. So you got to catch your faith, got to catch up with the devil. Because he's trying to keep you out of God's best by keeping you in your head. Well, I just don't think I can do it, Pastor. I know, I know you say that. I know you say, I know you say, I know you've done it. I know, I know other people that done it. I, I just don't think I can do it. You know? And so that's what he does. See, you got to understand, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what the scripture says. We walk by faith. Now, in the book of Numbers, in the 14th chapter, right? which is after Numbers 13, right? Now, I said that to say this, because in the number 13 is when the spies went to spy out the promised land. So 13 actually reveals their experience, right? And so we get into 14, and we, it reveals the conversation that God has with them after they refuse to step in to what God had prepared them for. And so now we in the 14th chapter, right? And so the question becomes is, are you looking at the enemy or are you looking at God? Amen? And God says, since you don't want to go, then you ain't going in. And this is what he tells us. See, the Bible says that there is a, there's a season, right? There's a time for every purpose under the heavens. That's what it says. So that brings me to this thought right here, right? That there's a time when God is giving you a push into a season, all right? Exactly at that time when the window of opportunity is open. So at the same time, he's giving you a push. But sometimes we miss the push because of the wrong focus. We are focused on the wrong thing. We make this assumption that the window is going to come around again. And we call that spiritual procrastination. That's the worst procrastination. Because you're making an assumption that God has an obligation to do it again. Well, let me tell you something. God didn't have an obligation to do it the first time. But you're making an assumption that it will. Don't forget that he is God. All right, amen? And so God is saying that once you learn the lesson, now you're ready for the blessing. So God says, okay, let me run it again. 
let me run it back to you again. Amen? Now, I need all the perfect people to be quiet for a minute. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Now, all the people that have missed some doors in their lives, who have missed some opportunities in their lives, and who have missed some seasons in your lives, I just want to hear you say, run it back. Run it back. You remember the story of the prodigal son, right? That's a story of running it back. So Numbers 14, when you read it here, is so powerful. And Numbers 13, see, they didn't occupy the promised land because they had the wrong focus. And what we learned in class Wednesday is that your battle, right, that you see the battle was never limited to who's against you. It always includes who's with you. Amen. And against those who are with them. So the wrong focus begins to what? It turns your thoughts continually toward the enemy. And all you begin to see is the work of the devil and not the glory of God when you look at it. Amen? So your focus should be on Jesus. Amen? Not the devil, but the work of the devil is to take your eyes off of Jesus. That's one of his first weapons. But the, but the book told us that when you turn to Jesus, you got the victory in the battle. So we got to understand that Numbers is just a continuation of the book of Exodus. See, uh, uh, in Exodus, when God is talking to Israel, he's telling them, he said, I'm going to bring you out. Now watch this. I'm going to bring you out to bring you in. That's what he said. See, God isn't bringing you out of something just to bring you out of something. Amen? He don't work like that. He's an intentional God. So he taking you out of something so he can take you into something. And so he was taking them out of slavery so he could take them into the land of milk and honey. So God, when he brings you out of something, he ain't just bringing you out just to be bringing you out. He bringing you out so he can take you in. Amen. You got to see that. So he can take you into the promised land. So the next time, I need you to read the book of Exodus. Let me share something with you out of there. In the book of Exodus, in the uh, 13th chapter, the 17th verse, right? It says this. It says that when Pharaoh let the people go, watch this. God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country. Though that it was shorter to go that way. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return back to Egypt. So God led the people around the desert, right, and toward the Red Sea. And the Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. See, God knows that the battle will cause you to backslide if he doesn't prepare you for the battle. This is what he's telling them. God knows how to perfectly position you for your trials that you're about to go through. And sometimes God has to take us the long way, amen, to give us the things that we need to get into the promised land. I don't know why you don't do it much quicker. Hear me now. Hear me. Even though God takes us the long way, it really determines how long, we really determine how long we stay in the wilderness. If you got the wrong focus, then you're going to stay longer than you're supposed to stay. Amen? And sometimes it takes us longer in the wilderness because sometimes we think Egypt, oh, good God Almighty, good God Almighty, good God Almighty, because we think the wilderness is better than Egypt. Right? Look, what, look, look, he took them out of there because sometimes we think the wilderness is better than Egypt since Egypt was so bad. You ever notice that in our lives? The wilderness seems good, right? See, you're not where you used to be, but you're not where you could be. Amen? You're not in Egypt, but you're not in the promised land. 
And any time you get anything better than bad, you call it good. So you become content with it. Well, he don't treat me like he used to. She don't do me like she used to. Amen? Amen? So you think it's better. Amen? So you take that, you know. So what happens is that you stay longer because you are content with being in the wilderness. You can't see it better. So your focus is wrong. See, when you look at the Bible, you see, uh, you see Exodus, what is it? Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now watch this. Watch it. When you look at this, Leviticus, amen, is when God lays down the law. It's like 613 commands he lays down in the book of Leviticus, right? And then in Deuteronomy, he kind of reiterates the law to a whole new generation. See, Deuter now watch this, watch this. Deuteronomy is written while they are still in the wilderness. That's why we got to study the Bible. Because most of y'all should have jumped up and shouted on that. Amen. It's a book that's preparing them for Canaan. That's what it is. So you mean to tell me that God, amen, is talking to them in the wilderness about Canaan. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. No, you didn't. No, no. You mean to tell me that God is talking to them about Canaan while they're in the, in, the, in the wilderness. So you mean to tell me this. Watch, watch this, watch, watch, watch this, watch this. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, watch what he says here. In chapter eight. He said, when you get, huh? when you get into the land, that's what he says, huh? And when you get houses that you didn't build, and when you get wells that you didn't dig, and when you get vineyards that you didn't plant, remember me. Amen? Because it was me, God says, that gave you the power to get wealth. That's what it says. So God is talking to them about how they need to handle themselves when he take them to the next level. Oh, good God Almighty. God has brought you around, right? So he has brought them around to the next level. But he's bringing them to the, he's talking to them about the next level. Watch this. Why they still at this level. God is talking to them about why they still at this level. And God is talking to them how they're going to handle themselves at the next level when they're still at the same level. See, he brought you out, right? He put you around people who are at the, this level, amen, Why you still at this level. So he can prepare you for when you get to this level. So he tells them, he says, so when... I love that. So he tells me, he says, when you get houses that you didn't build, when you get wells that you didn't dig, when you get vineyards that you didn't plant, don't forget, stay focused on me because I'm the one that gave you the power to get wealth. Don't get off track. Don't have the wrong focus. So God is trying to reroute your focus. Amen. So I'm talking to you about stuff you don't have, he says. That's what I'm doing. I'm talking to you about stuff you don't have. That's what he said. I'm talking to you about stuff you ain't even done yet. And so that's why you get frustrated and irritated. And you see other people have it, but you don't have it yet. Because God got you in the stage of preparation. Amen? Amen? And in the stage of preparation, it takes correction. Amen? So in order for you to get to this level, at this level, you might have to go the long way. Not everybody going to go the short route. Amen? So he says, I'm preparing you for something 
that right now don't make sense. Oh, I know how that feel. I know how that feel. I know how that feel. I'm preparing you for something that don't make sense now. Make it make sense, Lord. Amen. Make it make sense. He says, I'm having conversations about Canaan Why are you in the wilderness. I'm having conversations about being wealthy while you're poor. I'm having conversations about happiness while you're unhappy. I'm having conversations about healing while you are sick. And you can't get it. You can't get it. So every time, so God, every time, God is saying, every time I get ready to elevate you, I got to work on your focus. I got to get your focus straight first. Because you got the wrong focus. I got to set you. He says, he says this. He says, I got to set you in a season so you can eliminate some of them issues you got. You wondering why it's taking so long for you to get where you want to go. Because he got to eliminate them issues. You know them issues you got. Insecurity. Lack of self-confidence. I can't. I won't. They will. You know that. And then he got to take you into a season where he got to eliminate some individuals in your life. And then, once he does that, amen, amen, amen. Then he got to take you through a season where he got to eliminate some of them attitudes y'all got. Oh, y'all got some attitudes. Amen. And he's doing all of that so he can get us ready. You see, correction in God's eyes is just preparation. That's what it is. It's not that God is mad at you, that God don't like you, that he don't love you. He just want to get you right. He want to prepare you so when you get there, you can stay there. Amen? Most of the time, people can't stay there because they haven't been prepared to stay there. They just jump right up there. Here they are, Israelites, right? Here they are. They sitting right on the edge of the promised land. They sitting right there on the edge of the promised land. And they say, here's what they say. They say, we see them as giants. And we as grasshoppers. Now, this was 10 out of the 12. Huh? And the thing about it is that they don't, you don't lose to the giants, y'all. David proved that. You don't lose to the giants. You lose to the grasshopper in your mind. That's how you lose. When you have big ideas with small thinking, that's how you lose. You lose to the grasshoppers in your mind. Amen? That's why you can't give the enemy a seat at the table. Because grasshoppers going to determine if you try and how you try. That's what it's going to do. When you got a grasshopper mentality, that's going to determine if you try and then how you try. See, some people stop, right? They stop from trying because of a grasshopper mentality. And then some others, it affects how they try. They don't try as much or they don't go as long or they don't put much work into it because of the grasshopper mentality. The advances in life is determined by who wins in the mind. Are you going to let the devil win in the mind? The devil is a lie, and the truth what? He can't tell the truth. And anything that he tells you is what? It's the opposite of what he told you. You know, we got to stop using I'm not language. You got to use I am like God. I am. You know what I mean? Because you created his image. When you, when you tell yourself I can't, I won't, I ain't, no. I am. Amen. I stopped by to tell you this. Don't miss 
manage your wilderness season with the wrong focus. See, Israel stayed in the wilderness not because of what God believed about them, amen, but what they believed about themselves. The wrong focus can take you to the wrong place. So you got to stay focused. The Bible tells us what? We need to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And Christ is the great I am. I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthen me. That's your focus. That's your focus. Amen? Moses' generation didn't go into the promised land. God let him see it, but he said you won't go in it. Your generation or nobody in your generation won't go in it because of the mindset. You ain't prepared for what I'm about to give you. And I think about that all the time. I said, well, Moses, see, that generation may have held back the next generation. And with each generation, God trying to elevate us to a different level. And sometimes the older generation can't accept what the newer generation is doing. Just like they couldn't accept what their mama and father was doing. So you get into the church and that's what happens. One generation want to hold the next generation back or hold them down when you're trying to get to the next level. See, that's the beauty of our, uh, of, of our belief. It's that it's progressive. We are always growing. We're trying to get to the next level. But most of the time, people want to hold you down. They want to hold you back. You got to understand this. This is what the author said in there. He said that our goal is to be like Christ. Not the war that we're in. Our goal is to be like Christ. That's what our goal is. He said, understand that the victory begins with the name of Jesus on your lips. Watch this now. And he says, but it consummates, but it is consummated by the nature of Christ in your heart. That's what it says. That's why the scripture tells us. What does it say? It tells us to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Amen. That's what it says. And that's what it's all about. It's about believing and confessing. And so you got to use the weapon that the devil is a lie. Don't let him get it twisted in your mind. Don't let him get you thinking that it's over when it ain't over. Sometimes when you get to the point where it's over, it's usually some correction going on in your own life. And God is trying to get you there. And you can't see it. Because you're still here. Amen? And when you're still here, you definitely can't see way up there. That's because you got to have what I call a giraffe look on life. You know, a giraffe is the tallest animal out there, right? And they can see a whole lot of things going on. A turtle can't see much. Basically, just what's in front of them. And most of us are, are, are viewing life through turtle eyes. Instead of giraffe eyes. You got to not only dream big, you got to think big. And that's why he tells us that, you know, that God, when God raised Jesus from dead, that automatically ought to just inspire you. Because if he can raise Jesus from dead, if he can raise, if he can resurrect somebody from the dead, then what you worried about? What you worried about? The greatest battle that was ever won, this author tells us, was the accomplishment of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. That was the greatest battle ever won. We wouldn't even be sitting here. Greatest battle ever won. So I'm telling you, don't give the enemy a seat at the table in your mind. Stay focused on the right thing. The wrong focus will mess you up. You got to free yourself today. You got to give your life an exit to the wrong focus and let Jesus be your focus. Amen? Because the Bible tells us that we are predestined
to be formed in the image of his son. Each and every last one of us. Each and every last one of us. And so, as you can see, all that they did, the Israelites did, all that they did, all that stuff they put to God through, they didn't have to stay there 40 years, but because they were just, they weren't able to see what God, at the time they murmured about going back. And that's what we do sometimes. We'll be in one situation, and it'll be terrible, and we'll get in another situation, and it'll be just good, but we ain't used to it, so we want to go back. We want to go back to that relationship, back to that environment, back to that lifestyle. When God used that lifestyle to prepare you, to propel you, so you can continually go up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And there are steps. You, I couldn't get up there without steps. And the only way for you to go up is up the steps. So you have to step over doubt. Amen. You got to step over fear. You got to step over I can't. You got to step over all of those things in your life. I won't. It ain't possible. Because all things are possible through Christ Jesus. We can do it. But you got to believe that you can do it. If you can't believe it, can't see it. And if you can't see it, then you can't feel it. And if you can't feel it, see it or believe it, you can't achieve it. That's the wrong focus. I can't think, I just can't imagine. I mean, I think I was like that. I can't remember back, but probably was. You got people in the church like that. They got one foot in, one foot out. And they ride in the fence. That's what they doing. They ride in the fence. You come to church on Sunday to assuage your conscience. You come to church on Sunday to get a fix. And once you get it, you're gone. You're back out there doing whatever it is that you did before you came. And you can't live like that because you know what it'll cause you? It'll cause mental illness. It will cause mental illness. It's bad enough we are already uh, uh, schizophrenic anyway. <laughs> Amen. We are. We are. Because you're living in somebody else's world. Amen. But you're trying to adapt. So you got to be two people. You know how it goes. You know, you talk one way around me, and then when somebody else come in a little lighter than me, you be like, well, hello. <laughs> and with me, you be like, hey, what's up? Yeah. And they do the same thing, and it causes you to be schizophrenic. Because you become two people trying to live in one world. Just be who God created you to be. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about them. They ain't, they, that ain't important. What's important is what God thinks about you. And you need to believe in yourself. Because the devil believes in you. That's why he's working on you right now. He's telling you right now. Tune him out. Don't listen. I remember when he was. You know, they, they, all that stuff will come up. I had a lady one time to tell me that. She said, I remember when you was. I said, was what? <laughs> Been so long. I was like, was what? Then she brought up my past. I said, well, that wasn't me. She said, oh, no, you can't say that in the church. I said, yes, I am. I'm saying it in the church. That wasn't me. The devil is a liar. Amen. You got to use that weapon. I'm telling you. It works. It works. And a lot of you mothers know that. You know you weren't about to let the devil take your kids. You got down on your knees. Your kids don't know that you prayed. My mama prayed for me. I didn't know. Until the, until the doors in the jail start opening up. Amen. And I walked out. I knew somebody was praying for me every day. Amen. But you know, we got the victory, y'all. We got the victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible says again, if you just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior, 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Let us stand. If you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you need that protection. Amen. You need that protection because we're living in a world. We're living in a world where you don't know what's going to happen when you leave here today. You know, we just take it for granted. No matter what age we are, we just take it for granted that we're going to see tomorrow. And the Bible tells us that to, tomorrow is promised to what? No man, nobody, no woman, no child, no nothing. Amen. So if you want to give your life to Christ, this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. If you have not accepted, if you want to join with us and serve, our doors are open. We will accept you. Amen. God is trying to take you out of something to bring you into something much more better than where you are. Don't miss your doors. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your season. cards right here on the back by the prayer box. If you want to fill one out, put your information on there. We'll call you. Amen. You can just check off the boxes. nothing too big for God. And you got to understand that we serve a God that's able to do anything. If you just read the book of Genesis, you'd be like, not, uh, probably very few of us, if any of us, ever even planted a tree. Maybe a few of us threw some grass seeds out. And I don't know how many people out here are farmers, but God was able to create the heavens and the earth. If he was able to do that, then there ain't nothing that he can't do and won't do for us. Because it says that we are created in his image and his likeness, and he blessed us. There ain't nothing he can't do for us. The only thing that's holding you back is you. That's it. You, your greatest obstacle. I know you want to blame somebody else's behavior or you want to blame somebody else's attitude. You know what I mean? But you, you can recover if you want to. Deliver it if you want to. But you have to want to. God makes it available. You know, he didn't create all of this for everybody else to live good. He didn't create all of this for that. He created it, all of this so we could all have a good quality of life. He created plenty of land, plenty of water, plenty of food. Amen. The only thing man thinks he control is the money. And he thinks by holding that back, he can oppress you. Amen. 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 Let me stop. Amen. We're going to have the deacons come forward. Hey, man. About offerings, tithes and offerings.
You know, if God has been a blessing to you, be a blessing. Amen. We try to utilize what we get so we can make an impact on the community in which we worship in. Amen, amen, amen.
Thank you. We're so glad that you came to worship with us this morning. Do we have uh, another guest? Is that connection still? And we certainly invite you to come back and be with us again. <laughs> um, Bible study is on your uh, in the class on Wednesday at six o'clock, and then we have Bible study using on our cell phones at 12 o'clock on Wednesday with Sister Thorpe and uh, Brother Biddle and Sister Shirley. Sunday school this morning is from the book of Acts and we talked about the eunuch who by the roadside was reading a scripture that he needed to have opened unto him because he understood not. And along came Peter and Peter was talking to him and explained that and ex exposed him to um, Jesus Christ. And of course, the eunuch accepted. And what happened? I hear it over here. There was a body of water close by, and he was baptized at that time. So you don't have to have a whole lot of fanfare sometimes, as we think we need to. But when he accepted Jesus at that time, the scriptures were open to him and p baptized by Peter. Okay, and now we have our prayer list. If you look on your um, bulletin, there are quite a few names on the prayer list, but there are a lot of others that I would uh, like to uh, add uh, Sister Priscilla called me this morning shortly before I left to come to Sunday school that she had just gotten out of the hospital yesterday. So that's uh, Brother Otay's wife, our uh, bongo drummer. And uh, she wants the church to be sure and pray for her this morning. Also, for those of us who know her, uh, Sister Arnold, her husband was the Reverend William Arnold of Golden Leaf Baptist Church. I understand that her son is very ill and in the hospital, so we certainly want to lift her up in prayer. She has previously lost a son as well as her uh, husband. Also, the pastor had spoken about uh, Deacon Travis at Golden Leaf. Also, apparently his wife has passed this morning. Now, a lot of you may not know, but some of us who are here uh, do know these people. But we always want to continue to pray for one another. This Saturday coming up, uh, which is the 27th, will be the home going for Sister Gladys Peak. It will be here at the church. Visitation is from 10 to 12, and then the uh, service will follow. Okay. And we certainly... The Pete family would appreciate any support you may give them and come out at that time. First Saturday in June, women's meeting. That's our time, 11 o'clock. And we had an awesome time at the Pray and Paint last night. So now uh, the first Saturday in June will be our regular women's meeting. And by now, I think we should be on the second chapter of our book. Of the, the book. And then on June the 17th, they will be going to see the play. Okay, and I think it, uh, plans are already finalized for that because they had to get the money in and the seating and all of that. Okay, Sister Denise will speak on that in a minute. And uh, that's about all I have. Do we have any birthdays? This week or the week coming up any birthdays I don't see any hands okay sister Denise <laughs> good morning we do have a few more tickets for the um, ain't too proud that we'll be um, going to view on June the 17th so we have a few of the $47 we did end up with some extra tickets and a few of the $64 tickets. So I'll be in the back today after service for anyone who's interested. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. 
And remember to support the Peak family on the 27, which is Saturday coming up. You know, we want to be there for them. Whatever you can do, please come out. Just get with Reverend Peak. Uh, he can uh, he can help you and tell you where he where the need is. We got the parking lot. We got the doors. Amen. Doing, we're doing uh, uh, we're doing lunches today, so we're gonna bag up today and take them out to the homeless. Anybody wants to help us, pack them up, fine. And those who want to help us, take them out to the community. We're gonna go out there uh, under the bridges of Green Street downtown, right? Yeah. So we need your help today. A <laughs> one uh, stigma. Uh, okay. Hello, congregation. I am a representative of A1 Stigma Free. And A1 Stigma Free is a coalition, and our mission is to help reduce the overdose deaths in the African American community by providing evidence based treatment and resources. As of right now, there's a lot of African Americans who are dying, overdosing just off of recreational drugs, street recreational drugs. Now, uh, those, those of you, if anybody in here smokes weed, if anybody in here who has back pain and at times run out of their pills and go and buy them on the streets, uh, if any of you do any type of drugs, what, what, what we have here is fitting our test strips. Because fentanyl right now is getting put in everything. And that is why there is an alarming and high, I'm talking about it's high. And it's not being talked about because uh, when, when you talk about it, now that it's hitting us, it, it is, it's not being exposed as it was when it was hitting them. And as long as we expose it, that's when the funding and the help will come in. So that's what we as the black churches we are doing. There's 11 of us, and our church happens to be one of them. Uh, and that is to educate our people on those of you who might know somebody who indulges. We got fitting our test strips in this here. We'll let you know if your drugs are contaminated. And it's a real simple process. And if you don't, yeah, which how you do it. When y'all leave church today and go in y'all bag, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> All right. Amen. We try to be 100. Yeah. Some of y'all might take a pill, like, man, I need me a drink. I just want to take me a whatever it is you might take. But you're like, you know what? I got this from Buki and them. Let me just make sure, you know, this is all right. Because I heard them talking about this on church. So you're going to take a piece of your little perch, and you're going to throw it in some water, and then you're going to take this little test strip, you're going to, let me, let me see, you're going to let it uh, dissolve, and, you, and then you're going to take a, you're going to hold the blue tip, and you're going to put this in there, you're going to wait a minute, and then you're going to take it out, and if it has a line in it, it's positive, you got fit now. All right, if you're going to go smoke your weed, you're going to go roll your one. And you don't got to put that in the water. You can just take your little corner of the bag and, and go like that. And you'd be like, oh, man, it's got fit now. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm, we're going to have some of these in the back. There's a little uh, canister right there, and we're going to put some in. And I know that and we got children, you got friends. I encourage you to please take this. Take one of these and, and uh, give it to them because it can, it could save their lives. So I'm going to put this in. If you don't, there's a QR code. Just uh, do the QR code, and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. Thank you. Amen. 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 <clears throat> you know, uh, Montany and Tiffany uh, with A1 Stigma Free Coalition. Stand up, Tiffany. And uh, and so 
they, on, they, on, they just started this like a few months ago. I don't know exact start date, but they only started this a few months ago to bring awareness to our community about the overdose. So I go to these meetings with Tabor House and all these huge organizations, Hamilton County. So we're sitting at this big, big round table. It's a big round table. There may be like 20 people there. <clears throat> and so the director of Tabor House, Dr. T, uh, Monty does a presentation, and when she gets finished, you know, it's like everybody at the table recognizes them. They'll be like, A1, A1. Yeah, we're going to get involved with A1. And just in this short period of time, this is how God works, A1. So Monty proposed to do something, and Tiffany and they proposed to do something, a program, not, uh, something, an event they got coming up. So like the head person of the table says, well, uh, how can I get involved in it? I want to be on the committee to do it. And then, you know, of course, when the head person say, everybody else jump in. You know how that is. Everybody, oh, I want to help. I want to help. I want to help. And I'm thinking to myself, man, that's a heck of an impact for just a few months for you to be sitting at a table with Hamilton County, Tabot House, all the big boys, and they want to be a part of you. So we need to be proud of them. Amen. Yeah. See, that's an example of, of being down here, right? And God trying to get you, you know, it's being in the wilderness what God talking to you about Canaan. Amen. And so I, I'm deeply grateful for them and I'm thankful for them. I was, I was proud. I was sitting there like, all right. And then I can go to the meetings and sit back and not say nothing. Like, Monty, Tiffany, go ahead. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yesterday, um, uh, yesterday, we had the men's breakfast. Real quick, I won't keep you alone. We had the men's breakfast, and we had Robert Smith come in to talk to us about, uh, about um, investment, real estate investment. He did a wonderful job, didn't he? Wonderful job. He had everybody's attention. And, it was, and people enjoyed it so much that we decided that we was going to start a class. He and I are going to start a class. So June 10th, and everybody's invited. Everybody's invited. You know, it's about how you know, get involved in real estate. You got questions, and we're going to start so, so everybody can understand. June 10th, write this down. Every Saturday in June at 930s, ladies, you are invited to come. Amen. Get some of that information. It's free. We ain't trying to upsell you on nothing. We ain't got no tapes, no books, no audios, or none of that. We're just trying to. He's on the same way left I'm on. We're trying to give you information for free so you can live quality of life. Amen. So that remember that that's June 10th, the 17th, the 24th real estate classes at 930 in the morning and downstairs in the fellowship hall. All are invited. And then also one other thing, uh, there's a uh, college scholarship. Uh, Deacon Charles gave this to me. Uh, it says that there's great opportunities, free college funding workshop. Write this down. Friday, May the 26th, that's this Friday, from 6 to 8 at the Cincinnati Museum Center. And you're never too young to go get college funding to start on it. And that's at 1301 Western Avenue. Graduate debt-free. Graduate from college debt-free. That's this Friday, 6 to 8 at the Cincinnati Museum Center. And that's at 1301 Western Avenue. Amen. Amen. I was just reading the day where a lady called in a talk show to, be, to help her with her college debt, and she had $258,000 of her college debt. Yeah, two hundred and fifty-eight, And he took care of that. Took care. All right, just remember to hold up the Peak family and the Travis family. Amen. As they celebrate the life of a loved one, you know, we're going to definitely miss Sister Peak. Ain't no question about that. Amen. We're going to definitely miss her. Uh, you know, I see Pat, and I be thinking, she right there. <laughs> yeah, so it'll take a while, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it, right? Amen. Now, we got another cheerleader, her and Sister Brown up there getting God to do all these favors for us. Amen. Amen. We got a bunch of people up there. We got, uh, we got uh, 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 Deacon McQueen. 
We got uh, uh, Reverend Mosley. We got Sister Brown. We got Sister Frazier up there. We got Sister uh, Peak up there now, boy. I'm telling you, boy, we get ready. God get ready to open up some windows because I know they up there hollering for us. Amen. So I thank God for the cheerleaders. Amen. You know, we, it's the Bible says that we mourn, but we got a different hope. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm just saying that let's, let's support them. Let's hold them up in prayer. And God bless you. Amen. All right. Anybody got a personal testimony? A brief personal testimony? Because I know some people, I got some people here, boy, they can talk. All right. Well, let's stand. We're going to hold the, uh, the Mims family. Anybody that wants special prayer, you know, you're welcome to come on up into the altar. Amen. We're going to ask the Lord to. To move and move the way he moves. We can't tell God what to do. Amen. We can pray and request. Amen. And I want y'all to remember the family out there in Wind Terrace who house caught on fire. She lost two children. You know, it's always devastating. Well, I hold up Sister Arnold, like uh, Sister Mosley brought to our attention. You know, it's always devastating that when a child leaves before us. Amen. 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 So we are grateful. You know, we serve a mighty God. You know that? When, when I was reading that, he brought them out of slavery and took them into the promised land. Wow. You know, and then when I think about where he brought me, where he brought you, you know, we got to hold up Brother Brown. Is Brother Brown gone? He left already? Okay. We got to definitely hold him up. Amen. I want y'all to always be in prayer for Brother Brown. You know, uh, he's not taking chemo no more. All right. Amen. So we're just going we're just going to trust in God that he's able. Amen. We Well, we know he's able. Yeah. So we're just going to ask them to do it. Amen. Let us bow. Eternal Father, we come today thanking you first for all the blessings you've given each and every one of us on a continual basis. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for your presence, and we thank you for your power that exists in each and every one of us. God, you know what we're in need of. Right now, we come before you right now on behalf of Brother Brown, praying, oh God, that you will continue to deliver him, heal him. Give him peace and comfort right now. Give him rest. We ask also that you look over his wife too, Father God. Be with her, oh gracious God. Continue to give her the patience that she needs and the strength that she needs. Then we ask that you will continue to watch over the Peak family. We ask for a blessing upon them, that you will comfort them. The Travis family, we pray likewise for them also, oh God. And then, God, we pray for Mary Arnold and her family and her son. We pray right now healing in their lives right now, oh gracious God. God, we know you know all that are on our sick list. So we hold them up right now in the name of Jesus. For we know that you're able. And so we just ask that you would heal them right now in Jesus' name. Father, you know what each and every one of us in need of. You know what our desires are, oh God. So I ask that you grant it in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for those that are wrestling with addiction, that you would deliver them. And those in recovery, you would give them strength to continue on. We pray, God, that you will continue to utilize our church that we can make an impact in the community in which we worship in today. We pray for our children. We ask that you protect them, guide them, and lead them, oh gracious Father. Father, we pray that you will let them prosper in whatever they do, oh God. Take them to the next level, oh gracious Father. Open up their hearts and minds and let them be able to see what you have in store for them, oh God. And then, Father, we pray for their families and their caregivers that you continue to be with them, oh God. Let them instill in them patience, love, support, kindness, and encouragement in their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Now, I thank you, God, for everyone that's here today. We give you the honor and the glory. Now continue to mold and shape each and every one of us that we can continue to do your will and not our will. We love you and we appreciate you. Now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.
I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. 